Hi, my name is Travis Bailitz. I'm an aspiring piano technician tuner for Bailitz Piano Service. So I'll just let you know right away the best thing about getting a grand piano is that it's a grand piano and it just sounds a lot better than a dinky old practice piano we used to have. But another problem with getting a grand piano is getting the grand piano because most likely or not you're going to neglect the old piano if you still have it. So let's get to it. I'm going to explain several ways to repair your piano if there's issues with it. As you can tell here, there's a lot of dust on here and you can tell it's definitely been neglected. But that's not the only problem. As I was further going to play this piano in the future, this piano has been neglected for two and a half years, which is something I really regret. Because as you see here, we had a mice infestation and there's a couple keys that won't even play because the crumbs ended up getting through the the keys. So what I'm going to do is somehow clear this off and get the piano to play again. Like a car, you got to continue to maintain the vehicle just as a piano because if you don't, you're going to end up something like this in two and a half years. You might have something that totally ruins your piano and from a, a amateur person who might own a piano, you may have no idea how to fix a problem. Not only that, if you tune a piano in Minnesota, the low end of, of what they charge is 140 bucks, and that's steep for many people that just want to play piano. So in a future video, I'm going to share with you on how you guys can tune your own piano. All you simply need is some mutes, tuning mutes or, or strip mutes, and you also need a tuning hammer, but we'll explain later. So right now what I'm going to do to start is actually clean off the mess here with the, a vacuum here. And the thing is, if you want to clean off any debris on your piano, you never want to use a duster because with a duster, it sprays chemicals. Even though it's just air, it uses chemicals and it could damage all the parts that are within the piano, especially the hammers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to it and start cleaning off the crumbs in the piano. So you want to clean it as best as you can. It shouldn't take too long, but you want to get most of it off in hopes that it'll not get in between the keys. So that's good. So this is an Everett piano. Not quite sure how old it is, but as I lift the top, uh, the earliest, I don't know exactly what age it is, but the earliest tuning was in 1999. So it's, a, it's been used pretty frequently. So above here, you can see these are the, the pins on the piano. And then if you look through that, down below, they're attached to a string, which is the bass and treble strings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the key dust here. For most, for some pianos, it just pulls out, but this one I'm, I'm for sure pulls out. So you just slip it off like that. And you can see here, this is what the inside of a piano looks like. It's pretty basic, but once again, if you neglect the piano, things are likely to get damaged over time. So what I'm going to do, wow, look at that. That's horrible. I never noticed, but this thing is completely filled with dog food. <laughs> this is worse than I thought. So this, the stupid mice must be living in here much more than I thought. Look at that. That's all fucking dog food. Don't swear in this video. Sorry. Sorry my, my turn, but this is worse than I thought. I didn't expect it to be this bad. So we'll have to... What I'm going to do first is remove this, this, uh, this fall board. And you might have to you might have to look exactly where to attach it to. As you can see there here it, it uses a Phillips here. So I'm just gonna remove the the screws here. And you wanna make sure that you 
place your parts in an area that you know that you can get access to them because if you drop them it can be really hard to replace the parts. I'm very surprised after two and a half years of neglection this looks the worst that I've actually seen. Now I really regret not playing this piano even though we got a better grand out there. And with some fall boards that might be different, this just has two screws that are attached to a hinge, a 90 degree hinge. We might have to actually totally take the action apart because there's the likely scenarios that the crumbs got below the, in some of the cracks of the hammer itself. Or not the hammer, but the key itself. So I got two screws almost out there. I'm going to place it right here so I remember where they're at. And if you can't remember, you might want to label them or put them in a specific box, but this is pretty self-explanatory. What do you think, Kyle? Do you regret not playing this piano? Even Kyle has regrets of not playing this thing because, yeah, the beauty of uh, grand pianos, you get to play it all the time. But if you neglect the old one, things are bound to get wrecked. And as you can see, we're going to have to do a big repair. And I guarantee you, if a professional did this, they'd probably charge more than 140 And I live in Minnesota, so that's low end. Imagine what it'd be in California or New York. Pretty high. Okay, I almost got the fall board removed. Hopefully you guys have enough room. As you can tell that, oops. As you can tell, I removed the fall board and you want to make sure you have enough room. So make sure you designate an area where people aren't likely to trip on, especially children. Oh yeah, it's worth mentioning all this stuff was on the piano, so this is the reason why we neglected it. But it has not been dusted because it would just, there's so much junk on it. But the one thing you need to be aware of if you are going to tune a piano or fix it or whatever, have the owner remove all the memorabilia, all the products, all the things that are on the piano just in case if things break. So if you end up breaking something, that could be pretty embarrassing. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to also remove this, this board here. I'm not quite sure. It just, it holds the keys together. And it just uses the regular Phillips as well. This is below the fall board. So it's possible that this may have it on a, this is a console piano. So there's three, four pianos that I am aware of. There's two categories, vertical and grands. Uh, this is a console piano because the big ones with the large rectangle top are considered, uh, they're all vertical grands, but that one's the biggest. And they usually consider that an upright, a regular upright. This is smaller than a console. And if there's a drop action, these things would be below the, the keys. That would be a, a, a spinet. So there's one more here and this one's going to be hard to remove, but I'm going to have to, it doesn't use the specific, uh, it doesn't use the specific, uh, Phillips screw. It's like a, 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 it's like a center weight with the screw in between. And I can show you once I get it off, but this is what I remember. So I did this once. So that's how I know what to do because. I was trying to explore inside the piano and what happens. So it's almost removed. So this is what it looks like. It has this, this strange oblong and it screws from the top, kind of like a washer or a nut. This is a nut. A nut. See it? Got it? Yeah. All right. 
So let's remove this. All right, I'm gonna remove that and we definitely have to explore that as well. So I'm gonna remove, also remove the key end blocks here. And I don't know if it, if it fell but down here, I might have to remove this as well, but we have to wait and see if it's down below. But for now, we're gonna move the We're gonna remove the key end blocks and when you put this back together you gotta be careful because if it's off it, the key slip in front is not gonna come off or it's not gonna stay on correctly so you gotta be careful that it's in the right position and I think there's only one screw here so and in order to get that you got to remove these ones as well on the side which holds the key end block in now don't lose the screws Kind of, it's kind of important to remove that as well. I don't know what this is called. It just holds the key and block in. But as you can tell, that's the right key and block. I'm going to remove the left one. Take out the shim that's holding the key and bl block together on the left hand side. It looks like I lost a screw already, so that's unfortunate, but hopefully that one sits in properly. Not sure why it's not coming out. That's weird. The other one just came out, but I, I don't know why this... Oh, the screw's right there, never mind. Just hiding. Now don't be like me, you neglect everything, then you think it's not worth it, but if I were a pianist and I do compose music for 12, 13 years, I think piano tuning is a really lu a luxurious career for you if you're ever interested and you don't want to teach, but anyways, I just want to let you know that if you have kids or whatnot, you don't want to invest you don't want to invest yourself in a really cheap piano because most likely than not they're not going to continue to play. So you want to have a decent piano that sounds well a hot a much focus on the middle or high end if you can because kids are more likely willing to play. Now just for kicks I'm going to take off the action and I believe these just come off. Not sure quite why it's, they're so hard. These are just screwed in together, but I'm not sure why. I might have to go go get a, a You might have to get a channel locks to take them off. They're just screwed in and this takes the action apart. I believe, I'm not quite certain, but I believe this just comes off. So this is an Everett, not quite sure what happens when the other consoles are spinning, those are quite different, but I'm sure verticals have a similar way to take things off. And you'll see this action come apart as well. I actually might have to take all these individual keys out to make sure that they're clean, but I'm not quite certain. I'll have to wait and see. Alright, that's it. So, I believe, I think I'm missing, I don't know where I put it. That's the thing, you got to be careful where you place the parts, as I, I seem to be missing one of the, the bolts that hold, not the bolts, oh there it is, I have them all. Okay, so let's take this action off. 
I believe it just comes off. Let me look. It's been a while since I took this off, so I'm not certain. But, yep, it just comes off. And that whole thing just comes apart. So I'm going to just place it right here. All right, so we're going to do another cleaning. Once again, don't use compressed air. It's going to damage the parts. So let's just get to it. This hooks under the piano, so I don't see another one, but I believe this connects here. Maybe. Right here. No, I'm not sure. That that has that too, but... Oh, well, I have to figure this. I'm not quite sure what that part is. I'll have to just figure that out later. I hope there's no mice in here now. They're gonna be really mad, but it has to happen if I wanna play it again. Might be full already. Yup, it's full. I'm gonna have to dump it. I'll be back. So if anyone has sticking keys, it's recommended to get, to bring a vacuum. All those sticks, we're getting to figure that out. Uh, all of them stick because the action's not on there. Which holds this down, see? get back to cleaning. All right, so you can see here, you can't get in here right away, so you're gonna have to take these off. You're gonna take the keys apart. Wow, it's all in there. The mice goes in there at all everywhere. We might have to take all the keys out. It's worse than I thought. What happens if you mess up what key goes with? Well, that's why it's important to remember where they're at because I might have to take this all off because there's it just has to get clean because it looks terrible. So I believe this comes off too, but I gotta is something that holds it. So you can see that comes off too. Which is a panel that is in front of the piano, so let's just tune that up. So that's clean pretty well. So the first thing I want to do is just take this entire section off. So I'll just do this instead. So I know what has to get done. So I place them in order like this. So I know where they go. Oh, look at that. They're all under there. So that's why it has to get clean. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Mess up the keys. 
can mess what keys. Yeah, it would, because then they won't fit properly. So that's why you got to know the order, else they won't fit. All right, so let's clean that up under there. Look at these, these are in horrible condition, but for now they work. But these are the the felt buttons that go on top of the keys below the key itself. But you can tell that they're not worn, but they're definitely dusty. So what I'm going to do is I have uh, just a simple old, what is this? I don't know, a duster. So I'm just going to clean it off and dust out the bad parts here. Now be careful, you don't want to be too excessive else you might so that's probably the best I can do no let's put these keys back on I messed up. Oh, they're actually numbered. So you can actually tell. 86, 87. There is a particular order that they go in. Might be a little tricky at first, but make sure they're in securely. You want to be careful because you might break the key if you're too rough. You, they have to go on here too, so remember that. So they're supposed to rest on here, but there, there, another in. This is the first time I actually had to take everything off. I didn't even do this because it was clean last time I checked. You want to be gentle because you actually might break something and that's not good because and it just costs more for the repairs and more time. I think it plays, it's much better than the one we have. Actually, I hate to say this, we get a lot of complaints that the piano is way too bright. And I gotta be honest with you, this piano sounds much better than the Grand, which is kind of sad to say because we spent a lot of money on that. At least 13000 on that piano. But what can you do? I don't want to get a new one. It was kind of hard to get that one in anyway. So this will definitely resolve the sticking keys. If it's something else, like, here, I'll show you later once I get done, but I'm going to show you the insides of what the 
the action looks like itself because I have a model. You can tell the keys are definitely dirty, so we gotta fix that as well. So I'm going to leave one off and remove these. This may not be dirty, but there's probably droppings in it like the other one. And here it's not too bad, which is nice. There is some dust that needs to be cleaned though. Some, oh, there is some leftover food here. It's nice that these are numbered because I probably won't be able to to get them all on properly without the numbers. So we definitely have to wash the keys off. I have a specific chemical for it, but I believe, uh, I'm not certain on this, but I believe just using vinegar would work. I wouldn't use Windex because it's a chemical, so that might ruin everything. So I don't recommend using chemicals at all. So just to be on the safe side, you might want to do a, a little research for yourself if you think it's the key. All right, so you can tell here it's still pretty messy, so I'm just going to quickly brush it off quick. All right, so let me see. I had a specific white bottle here, but maybe I put it here. I'll be back. All right, so I can't, I can't find, I can't find uh, the key brights to clean the keys, but I have this 91% isopropanol alcohol that should clean the keys as well. I actually recommend this overusing vinegar. Uh, for brushing cloth on front Mortise balance rail, but it should be okay. I'm just going to clean these off quick. Oh, well, luckily I didn't see a nest in here. I'd be kind of sad if we had to kill some, some mice. But I hate them in here. My dad said that he wanted me to kill mice that fall out of one of the, the vehicles he has. And I was too afraid because there were babies on the, on the little mouse. To the piano or to the organ? I believe there's no damage, so it looks like... If you want to look, you want to look at the, that there's no breaks in the strings, that it looks like they're not broken. So most of it's on the action. I'll have to check the action, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Huh? All right. So that should basically solve everything. So I'm going to put the action back. Oh, actually, let's put the fall, the, the lower panel back in since I already cleaned it and dusted it. So I'm taking the action and putting it back into place. 
Nah, I wouldn't recommend it. You might, if you use anything on it, it could ruin the... And you want to place it carefully because if you look here, there's already indentations. That's where they go on the unison strings. So you got to be careful. You don't want to, you want to make, be very delicate with this. So it's in, but the key's still sticking. I don't know what the hell is going on. What pin? It's not the cap stand, so I don't know what the hell it is. There's a whole bunch of tools on here, but I, I've never got to the training. I don't know a lot of people that would be able to help me. I also have to pay all of it myself, but since I want to be a piano technician. Let me see. So this is what an action looks like. I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on here. So if it's sticking, like, there's so much in there that I have no idea. And you want to start from the front to the back. But what could have got regulated was a spoon here. Or the cap stand here, but I can't really see exactly what why it's sticking like this. I don't know why it's doing this. It could the spoon got bent. So this is what's going on. If you look from the level, it it looks like uh it looks like this. So you're looking at this from the top, right? So what the problem is, is for some reason, the jack was not, this is the jack, and this lifts up the, this lifts up the, uh, the hammer. So this jack here, if you, it's not releasing, so it's getting stuck, it's getting stuck like this. So it's not the felt, it's the jack right here, this thing. It's this thing right here that I'm moving. Uh, so what I did was just to test it, I pushed this thing down like from here, you can see it, it goes like this. It goes like this right here. So what I did was the keys out, but what I did was, was I pushed this down to see if it'll, it'll release. And I think it's just got caught in the, this felt here. And so when I did this, I pushed this down and it released. And it's probably not good to use this, but I don't know the tools and I'm not sure what to use just to push that down. So anyways, let's get back to it because I think it should work. It's kind of hard to see it, but it was supposed to, supposedly this right here, this key right here. So what I did right here, here's the lead off and here's the jack. You can see it right there. This is the jack. Can you see that? The jack. So I pushed this down like that and then I was able to push the... The, the damper in and then after a while it just snapped out so, so reset the jack? I resetted the jack somehow by just pushing on the the jack right there pushing it down so then it you releases the hammer there probably is tools I just don't know how to use it but I'm just happy we got it to work all right so time to put this back in so what caused that? What the was jack was just the jazz just got misplaced and it was just getting caught so I assume that the jack itself was just not out of, it was out of place. Oh, what a lot of work. I don't recommend doing this yourself unless you really want to be a piano technician. And if you don't have the guidance, I recommend find some because this could damage everything if you don't know what to do like me. But luckily it's a practice piano. I have a decent one in there. I just want to try to fix it for now. No, I just leave it. 
I want to see if I can get it myself. Right, so it's in, so let's just tuck it in over here. There. It's in there. It's in there. So we got that right. So All right, so we got to figure this middle pedal now. And I think it goes right here somehow. Right there, it's moving. So the, this should push up here. Oops. This needs to push this rim forward like that. So we gotta figure out how that. I don't know if there's something that holds it there or not. It's just it's a soft pedal though. That's why we know it. it see how that comes up. So I assume this goes in like this, and that goes in there somehow. Oh, I see. There's a, oops, I'm gonna take it out again, which sucks. This all has to get in place properly. So that goes there. That's the soft pedal. This is the middle pedal. Oops, you gotta be careful. So time to place it softly as I can. All right. All right. And then it's off. So you gotta fix the the belt. Is off or maybe you gotta fix each individual. All right. So let's test the keys. quickly use the isopropanol so the key about taking this off let's check the pedal the soft pedal right here this rod comes out and it connects to this this damper rail here the middle rail here you can tell it lifts the bottom half and that connects right here in the back and then the right sustain pedal removes all the dampers in the back, which is connected right there. So that has to be in place perfectly. You can't just simply just think it's gonna, all that I had to relearn because I forgot about it. All right, so. All right. All right, so the one thing that I forgot to do is put these nuts back in. So that's what I'll do. So I'm going to tighten them with the just gradually.
All right, so let's put together the key end blocks again. All right, time to put the balance rail in. Time to put the ball, ball board on. All right, that seems to be good. Now time to put the final piece on, and that's the music desk. And it's still dusty, so I'm going to get another towel. It's probably not good, but... I know I say don't use chemicals, but if you put furniture polish on a towel, I think it should be fine. Yeah, I don't think we can fix it. Yeah, this thing broke. That's it, you're good to go. Nothing, because it was so hard to put together that you owe me nothing. I'm probably going to have to do cuts, because it's just too hard. Alright, that's it. I guess we could just try it. Oh, God, we got a sticking key.
probably because this isn't in and off. All right, we have an issue. Sticking key, I didn't realize that. You gotta take it all on pause, man. It's probably because it's stuck. Yeah. If you loosen it, it should be fine. Don't want it so tight there. That well, should be good. No it's too tight. You can't have it so you can't put the screws in so tight else it gets stuck. Time to put this piece back together and hopefully this is the last. It's better than what it was before, but it's still kind of weird. Anyways, that's it, folks. Thank yeah, you. Last words to say to you. Wow, this was a really hard project. I, you got to practice and play every so often, even if it's an old piano. You let it sit, mice can crawl into it, and it's a really difficult and challenging project if you just let it sit all the time, because we let it sit for two and a half years, and it was just full of dog food. So I'm glad we were able to fix it, but hopefully the next time we keep maintaining it by playing every so often. Thanks. Bye. This is Bayless Piano Services.